Okay, so AI regulation, right. It's like everyone's talking about it. But trying to figure out what's actually important is, well, overwhelming to say the least. Yeah, it's a lot to unpack. But I think what's really interesting is that there isn't just one way everyone's dealing with this. We're seeing everything from super strict rules to basically no rules at all, all over the world. And that kind of makes you wonder, is there like a right way to do AI regulation? I mean, is anyone even close to getting it right? That's the million dollar question. There isn't one easy answer, unfortunately. Every country, every region, they're all approaching this based on their own values and what matters to them. So it's like every country is bringing their own special ingredient to the table, trying to cook up the perfect AI law, right? Exactly. And let me tell you, some of those recipes, they're a lot spicier than others. Okay, well, now I need to know more. Give me some specifics here. Okay, so let's start with the European Union. They are all about having a really structured by-the-book approach with their, get this, AI Act. Okay, the AI Act, I've heard that tossed around. But what's it all about? It all comes down to risk. They look at an AI system and decide how risky it is. And then, bam, strict rules for every single level. So what kind of things are we talking about here? Like, what does high risk even mean in the EU? Think about systems that make big decisions that affect people's lives. We're talking hiring algorithms, loan applications, even stuff like some medical diagnoses. The EU is really serious about making sure those systems are transparent, fair, you know, accountable. So... None of that shady black box stuff making big decisions about people's lives. Exactly. They also are super cautious about anything that could be used to manipulate people, especially in ways you might not even realize. Oh, and forget about social scoring. Using AI for that, absolutely not allowed. Wow, they are serious about this. Okay, so what about facial recognition? That feels like a big one these days. You're telling me, yeah, the EU's cracking down on that too, especially when it comes to law enforcement. They're saying, hold on, we need to be really careful about using AI to identify people just based on how they look, you know, their biometrics. Yeah, I get it. It seems like the potential for misuse is just massive. Okay, but let's switch gears for a sec. What about the US? They're usually right there with the EU, passing pretty similar laws. Is that what's happening here? Not even close. The US is way more flexible with their approach, which honestly some people might even say is kind of a mess. Instead of just having one big AI law, they've got all these different agencies and old regulations that they're trying to sort of stretch and mold to fit this whole new AI world. So more of a figure it out as we go approach that. Basically, yeah. Like look at the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. They're getting really creative with those old consumer protection laws to try and address AI problems now. That's pretty interesting, using the tools they already have on something totally new. So, okay, the EU is strict, the U.S. is flexible. Where does that leave China? China. Oh, China's on a whole other level. Control. That's what it's all about there. They want to be the ones in charge, you know, making sure they know exactly what's happening with AI, who's doing what, and how it's being used. So, very much a we're in charge kind of approach. Do you have an example of how that actually works? Oh, yeah. One thing that's really different about China is this thing called a registration regime for AI. Basically, if you're developing certain types of AI systems over there, you actually need to get permission from the government before you can even launch it. Whoa, that's a whole other level of uh, oversight that you just don't really see many other places. So we've got the EU being super careful and organized. The U.S. is more, I don't know, adaptable maybe. And then China wants to keep everything on a tight loose. Are you starting to see any patterns here? Definitely. What's really interesting to me is that how each of these places is dealing with AI, it reflects something really important. Mm -hmm. The balance between letting innovation happen and keeping people safe. It's like that classic dilemma, right? Wow. We want to encourage all the cool new things AI can do, but we also don't want to see it used in bad ways. Exactly. And where a country falls on that, you know, that line between freedom and control, it really depends on their specific situation, their values, what their priorities are. So even if there isn't one perfect answer for everyone, it's still super important to understand those different approaches. Absolutely. Especially if you're someone who actually works with AI, because all these different rules or lack of rules in some cases, it's going to impact how AI develops and who gets to be a part of that. So if you're a developer, an investor, even just someone who uses AI, this isn't just some abstract, you know, policy debate, this is going to have real consequences. 100%. <laughs> and it all starts with realizing that there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution for any of this. Okay, that's a really good place to start. We've got the EU, the US, China, each doing their own thing. But what about everyone else? Are there other countries out there approaching this in a totally different way? Oh, absolutely. In fact, 
some of the most interesting stuff is happening outside those big players. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's talk about who else is shaking things up in the AI world. So you were saying some other countries are handling AI regulation in surprising ways. Tell me more. Okay, let's head over to the UK. They're trying something pretty different called a principles-based approach, and it's got people talking. Principles-based, huh? I'm not sure I'm following. What does that even mean when we're talking about something as like technical as AI? Right, good question. So instead of having all these strict rules, you know, a big list of do this and don't do that, yeah. they've set out these really broad principles like fairness, being transparent, and accountability. Okay, I'm with you so far. The idea is that the regulators they already have in all these different areas, they're the ones who are going to be applying these principles to AI, but in their own areas of expertise. Ah, okay. So it's like they're setting the overall vibe, like, here's what we value, so go make it happen, instead of giving everyone a super detailed rule book. Exactly. It's all about being flexible, letting things adapt as AI changes, which some people think is genius and some people think is, well, a recipe for disaster, honestly. We'll just have to see how it all plays out in the real world. So... A bit of a gamble then. Okay, what about Canada? What are they doing about all of this AI stuff? They've got to be in the mix, right? Oh, for sure. They're definitely in the game. They're actually in the middle of creating their own big AI law. It's called the AI and Data Act, or AAE, if you want to sound official. AIDA, I like it. Gotta love a good acronym. <laughs> but seriously, what makes Canada's approach stand out? They are really emphasizing the whole responsible AI thing. It's all about making sure that AI is developed and used ethically thinking about human rights and how it impacts society, all that. So really getting ahead of the curve and addressing the bigger picture, ethically speaking, before AI gets even more powerful. That's the idea. All right, now let's jump over to a country that's usually known for being pretty hands-off when it comes to regulation. Japan. Japan, really? They're always struck me as very pro-technology, but also not really into shaking things up too much. What's their approach to regulating AI? Well, they're all about this concept called soft law, which is kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. Think guidelines, suggestions, you know, voluntary codes of conduct. So instead of a giant rule book like the EU, they're basically saying, hey, here's what we think you should do, but no pressure. Pretty much. It's a very Japanese way of handling things, relying more on companies and industries to regulate themselves rather than the government breathing down their necks. Mm, that's interesting. But with all the potential downsides of AI, do you really think this whole soft law approach will cut it? You know, it's a really good question. And I think the answer depends on what kind of AI we're talking about. If it's something like a medical AI that's making life or death decisions, obviously the stakes are way higher than uh, like an AI that recommends movies. Yeah. That makes total sense. You can't really have a one-size-fits-all approach when you're dealing with something as powerful and diverse as AI. So it sounds like we've got this whole spectrum of approaches popping up, each with its own pros and cons. But is there anything they all seem to agree on? You know, even with all these different methods, there's definitely a growing sense that we can't just let AI develop completely unchecked. Like, everyone's starting to realize that this tech is insanely powerful and we need to be really careful about how we use it. So even if we don't have one global rule book yet, it's like there's this understanding that some ground rules are absolutely necessary. That's a great way to put it. And that kind of shared concern, it's leading to some really interesting themes that are popping up in all these different regulatory efforts. Oh, okay. Like what, what should we be paying attention to? Well, one of the biggest things is this move towards something called a risk-based approach to AI regulation. Risk-based. Break that down for me. Basically, it means focusing the most attention on the AI systems that have the highest chance of causing harm. Mm -hmm. Remember the EU's tiered system where they categorize AI by risk? That's a perfect example of this. Right, right. So it's like a spam filter for your inbox doesn't need the same level of scrutiny as an AI that's... I don't know, performing surgery or something. Exactly. It's about being smart about it, focusing on where AI could create the biggest problems. So this whole risk-based thing, it makes sense, right? Are there any other big ideas that seem to be popping up in all these AI regulations? Yeah, definitely. One that keeps coming up is this whole idea of responsible AI, which, you know, it sounds good on paper. It does sound good, but it also feels kind of vague. Like, what does it actually mean to develop AI responsibly? That is the million-dollar question. There isn't one perfect answer. But I think it starts with asking the tough questions, and not just at the end, but throughout the whole process of creating AI. Like, from the very beginning when you're designing it to gathering data, training the AI model, all the way to when it's out in the world, 
being used. So it's not just about following the rules. It's about making sure that ethics are baked into the entire process. Exactly. It's about thinking, are we accidentally building in bias when we pick our data? Are we being open about how this AI actually works? Have we even considered the impact this tech could have on society? These are the hard questions that responsible AI forces us to think about. So it almost sounds like responsible AI is as much about a company's culture, their values, as it is about regulations and laws. You got it. Regulations are important for sure, but they're just a starting point. Responsible AI really needs everyone involved to step up. Companies, developers, even the people using AI, they've got to see themselves as caretakers of this technology, not just creators or consumers. So where does that leave us then? We've got all these different approaches popping up all over the world. Risk-based seems to be a big one. And then there's this push for ethical AI. It kind of feels like we're just at the very beginning of figuring this whole thing out. We are, 100%. And honestly, that's kind of exciting, but also a little scary, right? <laughs> what we decide to do now, it's going to shape the future of AI, which, let's face it, is going to have a huge impact on all of us. Okay, so for everyone listening, what's the one thing you really want them to take away from all of this? Don't check out of the conversation. This is too important. Read about the different ways people are tackling AI regulation. Really think about what it all means. And don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. It's not enough to just understand the rules. We all need to be a part of shaping what the future looks like. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. If we want to make sure AI is a force for good, then we've got to find ways to use its power while keeping the risks in check. That's the challenge. Very well said. Okay, before we wrap up, you mentioned having one final kind of thought-provoking idea to leave everyone with. What is it? You know, something that really jumped out at me from all the research we did was how much energy AI actually uses, especially those massive language models everyone's talking about. They are real energy hogs. Right. I've heard that too. But how does that tie back to regulation? Well, think about it. As AI gets more sophisticated and we start using it for, well, pretty much everything, that energy consumption is going to become a bigger and bigger issue, a sustainability issue. So it's not just about privacy or bias in AI anymore. We might see a whole new wave of regulations focused on how much energy AI uses. It's definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could see things like limits on how big AI models are allowed to get, requirements to make AI more energy efficient, mm -hmm. even something like carbon taxes on developing AI. That wow. could get interesting. Wow. Now, that's not something you hear every day. The future of AI might not just be about innovation, but also about being smart with our resources. Exactly. Finding that balance, that's going to be a huge part of the AI revolution for sure. Well, on that note, we'll leave everyone to ponder the future of AI and all the big questions that come with it. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those tough questions, and stay curious.